Hello, and welcome to this edition of Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I am New York City Council Member Ben Kalos. I represent over 168,000 people on the Upper East Side, Roosevelt Island, and East Harlem. You can tweet me at Ben Kalos anytime. Today I'll be talking with Commissioner Fidel Del Valle about the New York City Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, or both. Little is known about this important agency, but all New Yorkers should become aware of OATH and the role that it plays. For those who don't know, OATH is the independent city court where New Yorkers go to fight summonses that they may receive from New York City's enforcement agencies, such as the Department of Buildings, Fire Department, Department of Environmental Protection, Sanitation Department, Health Department, and the Department of Consumer Affairs, among many others. Commissioner, thank you so very much for being here. Uh, many New Yorkers may not realize what OATH is or how important a role it has in city government. Can you tell us uh, how OATH was created and why? OATH was created originally by Mayor Koch back in 1979. Mayor Koch had the idea that every New Yorker who had a, a, an issue with city government, whether it was a summons or some sort of a petition against them, should have a fair, unbiased, and impartial tribunal to air their, their issues in front of, rather than in the agency that issued the complaint. Uh, so oath is where you go to uh, respond to summonses from city agencies. How do you know when that's an oath summons versus a different type of summons? And uh, uh, why do you think folks may not necessarily know about oath and whether or not they got a summons where they have to go to court versus oath. It's because it's, uh, oath started taking summonses from city agencies only seven years ago. Before that, we just did complicated trials relating to license revocations or human rights commission cases or city employee disciplinary cases. Uh, starting about 2009, uh, Mayor Bloomberg started transferring uh, the uh, adjudicatory functions of various agencies under oath. Uh, specifically, the Tax and Limousine Commission's tribunal was moved under oath, the Health Department's tribunal, uh, the tribunal of the Department of Environment, uh, then the Department of Environmental Protection, also, also known as ECB, uh, was moved under oath. They take in summonses from about 24 different agencies. And most recently, the Department of Consumer Affairs summonses came over. So people think in terms of those agencies more likely than they think of oath. And what we've done in the last year and a half is consolidated all those tribunals as the oath hearings division. Oath is split into two divisions, hearings and trials, and summonses uh, go to uh, the hearings division. Right now, the only summonses that we do not adjudicate are summonses of the Parking Violations Bureau and summonses relating to uh, tax cases. And that's about it. Most of them are coming to oath right now. So, so just to be clear for all of our viewers at home and online, you can't get a set of parking tickets. You don't do parking tickets. We don't do parking tickets. And if I owe taxes, uh, you can't help with that either. No, not that either. That's the, the, the tax uh, uh, tribunal and Department of Finance. And so what, what types of violations? So is it if I leave my, <coughs> if I don't recycle properly, if I leave my trash out a little bit too early, if I don't shovel, what are the types of violations that folks can expect to come to oath for? We get, uh, the most common summonses we get are sanitation summonses. Uh, and then there's buildings department summonses, there's health department summonses, there's summonses issued for vehicles for hire, that's usually a TLC summons. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, uh, used to happen is people didn't really know where the, the summonses were being adjudicated. Uh, typically, the summons would have said on the, across the top environmental control board and towards the bottom somewhere would have an agency code. So people would get, say, a sanitation summons for a recycling issue or for dirty sidewalk, and they would think the summons came from the environmental control board. One of the things that we have done at uh, the direction of the mayor is redo the, what the summonses look like in the city of New York. So that now a sanitation summons will say across the top Department of Sanitation, a uh, buildings department summons will say a buildings department and so forth. And it will be listed as returnable to the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, usually in the borough where the summons was issued. 
And, and so you and I get a chance to work together. I'm in the city council. The city council has oversight for agencies. As chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations, one of the agencies I get to oversee is Oath. Uh, and we have lots of hearings, uh, usually in March. And uh, coming up in May, we'll uh, be seeing each other on uh, Friday. And uh, we'll be talking a little bit about some of the great work you've been doing. Can you share folks with share a little bit with folks about what you've been able to do in the past three years? So you just talked about having just one summons, so that folks that get, don't get confused. Can you talk a little bit about other great things you've been able to do? Sure. When uh, Mayor De Blasio offered me this position, he gave me two instructions, and those are the only two instructions he ever gave me. Uh, first and foremost, to make sure everybody who got a summons in the city of New York got a fair, unbiased, and impartial hearing. And number two, that people recognize they got a fair, unbiased, and impartial hearing. Uh, I arrived at Oath in November of 2014, and I found out by talking to constituents, by talking to the public, community groups, business groups, council members, that virtually nobody believed they got a fair, unbiased, and impartial hearing. Uh, the next issue was why did they believe that? More often than not, they did get uh, a fair hearing. However, the way things were structured uh, over the last 25 years clearly did not give that impression. And in fact, some of the ways things were structured arguably could have been, it could be said, were designed in such a way as to make people more willing to pay the summons than to challenge the summons. I'm talking about practices such as, for example, uh, uh, inspectors who would write the summonses all returnable at 8.30 in the morning. So there's no way he could be testifying in 27 cases at 8.30 in the morning. People would be sitting there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon holding a summons that it said 8.30 in the morning, and it's not irrational for them to conclude that that was done deliberately so as to uh, torture them into not contesting the summons. Uh, and there were other... Uh, uh, things that were done and, and some are still being done and we're, we're thrashing through them uh, that compromise the, the, the perception of, of being unbiased and impartial. Um, part of it goes back to uh, the concept, I think, of, uh, of making government run like a business. Uh, some people took the wrong angle from that. Uh, we think of making government run like a business as the idea of being more efficient. Uh, but the, bi the function of business is to make money and to make money as easily as possible. And uh, things happen such as they, uh, uh, again, may not necessarily to, to disenfranchise people, but to make it, quote, more efficient in the sense of a business. Things such as at the end of the day, uh, the practice used to be if people didn't show up for uh, a summons, there would be an inquest with a hearing officer and whomever issued the summons to review whether the summons was issued properly and whether there was a valid uh, complaint, even though the person wasn't there. And if there wasn't a valid complaint and if the service was improper, it would have been dismissed. Well, purportedly to save money, they cut out having uh, the inspector there and in some cases cut out doing the summons review and just had a, a computer uh, automatically default people. Uh, as of last September, w we started to review summonses where people didn't show up just to make sure that they were properly served. And uh, uh, fortunately, the less than 2% uh, of the summonses that we've reviewed, which right now is a quarter of a million, uh, seem to have a service problem. But there's, there's small little things that add up to uh, procedural justice or the lack thereof. So you, you've gone through a lot of different items. You mentioned that if I get a summons now under your leadership, I'll actually be able to show up in my own borough. I don't have to trek across the city to maybe somewhere if I live in Manhattan in the Bronx, if I live in Staten Island in the Bronx, you don't have to travel two hours or more to get things because it's a big city. Uh, but what if I just don't feel like having to show up even in my own borough? Uh, are there other ways that I can respond to a summons? Yes, we've come up with a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, you can do it by telephone, which is my favorite. Uh, if you, th not all summonses are amenable to this because we have to coordinate with, with like two dozen different agencies. But we're working towards that goal, and right now a lot of summonses can be done this way, by telephone. 
You call in, you say you want a hearing by phone. You will be given a time and a, uh, uh, a date and a range say, of about a half hour where you will get a phone call from a hearing officer together with a representative of the agency that issued the summons. And uh, you can have the hearing on the phone uh, while not having to leave your office or your home or wherever you are, not have to take a whole day out to travel to wherever the, uh, the hearing center is to have the, the, the thing adjudicated. Uh, we also have, uh, for certain summonses, you can do it online. You can upload your evidence, your, your, your defense or whatever, uh, and uh, it will go to a hearing officer who will then make a determination and you will be notified as to the results. Uh, we also have a mechanism whereby virtually we speak any language we know of except Klingon, I think, uh, and I think we're, they're working on that. And I'm not, being, I'm not being too sarcastic or facetious, really. Um, all hearing officers have a phone on their desks that uh, they can pull up through language line uh, virtually any language that uh, is necessary for the respondent to be able to communicate. Uh, and there is a, a translator. I've, I've seen it in action. It's amazing how well it's done. Um, and if you have documents that have to be translated from another language, we will translate them for you. Just, just get, get them to us a little bit in advance uh, because it's a lot harder to translate a, a piece of paper. Um, we are uh, expanding uh, outer borough service. Uh, that is becoming... Uh, we can do it. We are now have the capability of doing it. The only th uh, thing holding it up right now is some agencies don't have the personnel to be there uh, five days a week in each borough uh, and, and people walking in. We are now allowing people to walk in with a summons and we'll deal with it. Uh, it used to be they were told you, cannot, you can only come in on the day and the time that was specified. Any time before that date, uh, we will deal with it if you have the, the, the summons in your hand. Um, there are, again, some complications to that because in some summonses there has to be an inspector who testifies and we have to coordinate with the agency mm -hmm. for that purpose. But th those are things that we're working towards. Uh, th that's a goal of the first deputy mayor who, uh, among other things, and, and this is really the, uh, the, the best part of this whole thing, it's, it's something people don't see, but when uh, we started looking at the oath procedures, we found out that uh, the procedures depend changed dramatically from what agency issued you the summons. Uh, if you had a building summons, the, the process and the, and the requirements and procedures were radically different from if you got a summons from TLC, for example, or from sanitation. Uh, this last year, uh, effective at the end of the year, we homogenized all the rules for procedures so that uh, adjournments are treated the same, uh, uh, appearances are, are treated the same. If you know you got a sanitation summons, you figured out how to deal with the sanitation summons, you'll also know how to deal with a health department summons, for example. Um, and the rules were wi widely different. Some had uh, 15 day time limits, some 30, some 45. Now everything is uniform. So people don't have to go crazy uh, trying to figure out what, the, what to do with the summons. Everything is consistent. And, and do folks who get one of these summonses need to show up with an attorney uh, or can they represent themselves? Uh, they can always represent themselves. They can always have a, an attorney or sometimes a, an authorized representative, so somebody they authorize. Our goal is eventually to make the process so simple and straightforward that anybody can do it themselves uh, without any added assistance. Um, the, the, the whole goal ultimately is, is to make it as simple as possible. That's one of the reasons the summonses are being made uniform. Um, old summonses, you couldn't even tell what, what, who, who issued you the summons. Some summonses, believe it or not, were eight pages long. Uh, depending on what agency gave it to you. We mm -hmm. were, we, our instructions from, from the mayor are make them simple, like uh, no bigger than a parking ticket. And I think you've touched on some of the challenges you're fa you're, you faced, but 
So here you are, you're, you're one of many, many city agencies and you oversee dozens. Are there any other specific challenges that you faced in terms of trying to uh, consolidate, centralize, standardize? Well, the craziest one uh, had to do with our computer systems. Uh, one of the mayor's goals is that at a certain point, uh, anybody who issues a summons in the city of New York will be doing it on a computer tablet. And that that information will instantly appear in our computers, and we will know what the charges are, and it'll be easier for the public to take care of it faster, and, 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 uh, and everything would be nice and uniform. Well, we found out that uh, we inherited four different computer systems that don't seem to like each other. We've narrowed it down to two, and eventually we'll narrow it down to one. And then 10 city, different city computer systems are supposed to feed information to us. All of them uh, vary in, 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 in how they work, uh, in their age, I mean, the most sophisticated systems belongs to uh, the Department of Transportation and the Police Department. But some computer systems that we're trying to, to integrate into our system, at least integrate in so far as they can, they can mm -hmm. communicate with us, go back to the 1980s. Uh, well, one agency, and I can't, I'm not making this up for, for folks who are old enough to know this, uh, one agency said they were having trouble doing the upgrades that we needed because they couldn't find someone who could program in COBOL. Uh, because I programmed in COBOL when I was in college in 1970 uh, and used little computer cards that were little punch cards mm -hmm. at the time. That's how you did it. And they probably had trouble finding people who can do that uh, because they're all either retired or have passed away. Or you're too busy running an agency. <laughs> and, and so in addition to all the reforms that you're doing at Oath and making it easier for people to appear, uh, you've also made it a priority to go into communities and tailor presentations and discussions for communities like small businesses and seniors. I've been lucky to be able to join you at access events with small businesses around Manhattan. And also you uh, kicked off the, uh, I know you call it courtesy, I call it court <laughs> easy event for seniors in my district just a few weeks ago. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, why you're bringing Oath into different communities? Well, if we're doing all these things and, and all of these mechanisms are being put into place one by one for people to be able to um, fight City Hall, basically, fight summonses and so forth, it's kind of pointless if nobody knows about it. And since we started uh, absorbing all of these functions only in the last few years, uh, you, you talk to somebody in the street and they have no idea what oath is or what the, their rights are or the procedures and so forth. I believe it's very important to get out there and let people know that Oath exists, what their rights are, what they the, the can do with Oath, what it's about, what are the appeals procedures, what kind of agency uh, business comes before Oath, what are the limits of what we can do. Uh, well, one of the things that uh, uh, we find as a challenge is changing the culture of some of the tribunals that used to be proprietary uh, to uh, various agencies. Uh, it came to as a shock to some folks, for example, that um, our hearing officer treats the respondent, the person who got the ticket, and the agency exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be uh, if the agency didn't show up for a hearing, they get adjourned, 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 and, uh, and the, the poor member of the public who got the ticket had to keep on losing work to come back if they wanted to fight the ticket. Right. Uh, right now, they both get one free shot each, and anything beyond that one free uh, adjournment, uh, they have to notify the other side, and it has to be done un unnoticed. Things like that. Uh, I want to bring people up to date on that it's, uh, we're bringing procedural justice into the system, uh, which it was Ed Koch's original vision back in my 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been kind of like delayed for 35 years. And so uh, you've, you've had an opportunity to hold some of these events. Uh, and uh, I guess what, what kinds of things have you learned by holding these events? I mean, it's not every day that a commissioner, let alone the chief judge of uh, the, the 
Office of Administrative Tribunals and hearings is there face to face with members of the public. Uh, what's been the uh, biggest takeaway from these events? Has anyone gotten out of any of their tickets? <laughs> well, we can't, we can't deal with anybody's individual tickets or one of these things. Uh, they can only be dealt with at, at a hearing, obviously. But the, the big takeaway has been that uh, uh, people still believe that uh, the system was rigged against them and they're pleased to learn that they have all of these options at, uh, in front of them for dealing with a ticket and that we are now religiously uh, adhering to the concept of being unbiased, unbi impartial, uh, and, and neutral with respect to, the, to city agencies. It's been a little traumatic for some city agencies, uh, not all of them. Um, oddly enough, you know, someone asked me, uh, well, is the police department giving you a, a lot of grief about that? And no, the police department is the one who's got the least problem with, with, with due process because they've been dealing with it for over 150 years. They know, a police officer knows that they catch somebody or believe they catch somebody, they make their case, they make their presentation, a judge or jury makes a decision <coughs> and they live with it and they go on with it. Uh, some folks in some agencies weren't used to that and uh, they're getting used to it. And so we have less than eight months left in the calendar year. Uh, we're filming in, in May of 2017. And uh, what are your priorities for the rest of the year? Are you planning to continue traveling around the city with more events and even more neighborhoods? Yes, because we're about to go into another leap, uh, a jurisdictional leap. Um, in many places all around the country, the sort of summonses that, that the Oath Hearings Division deals with are summonses that are dealt with in the local courts. The local criminal court, the, the, the district court, the justice court, whatever. Uh, for all intents and purposes, in that regard, Oath is morphing into the municipal court of the city of New York for, for minor offenses, non-criminal offenses. Uh, starting uh, late June, and the cases will probably start appearing at Oath probably in August or September. Uh, uh, city Council uh, last year, the Criminal Justice Reform Act, set up a mechanism whereby the police department will be issuing administrative summonses where previously they were issuing criminal court summonses. Uh, now, I want to be clear because there's been a lot of misunderstanding. This is not a decriminalization of particular offenses. Offenses that are criminal can still be criminally prosecuted it's at the discretion of the police officer based on his guidelines from the police department, but they will also be uh, handled administratively at an oath tribunal in, in one of the five boroughs. And these are, are lower level summonses that could be anything from littering to spitting on the sidewalk. Uh, virtually all the parks department violations will be coming uh, to oath. Uh, like I said, this is not decriminalization. Uh, police officers at a certain point will know whether they issued you a summons three or four times and you didn't respond to it, and they can then issue a criminal court summons to that individual. Um, the same uh, way if uh, uh, there's particularly egregious behavior, uh, they still have the option to issue a, a criminal court summons. Th things like um, uh, n loud noise, stuff like that there. And together with that, in its wit and wisdom, uh, the City Council also uh, included a community service aspect to uh, option if somebody's found guilty or pleads guilty to one of these summonses, they can be given community service. But we're taking community service to a different level. Uh, the classic uh, idea of community service is that you'd have somebody cleaning out garbage or streets or subways or stuff like that there. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be taking a, a, a more focused uh, view of whatever the uh, offense was and essentially replicating a model that was used in, in uh, the Red Hook Community Court, uh, criminal court in Brooklyn where uh, if somebody, for example, is charged with making too much noise and keeping people awake at night, mm -hmm. uh, they will be uh, 
given uh, counseling so they can understand that uh, although uh, theoretically you can do anything you want in your home, if what you're doing in your home uh, impacts people outside your home, maybe not. And, and you'd be amazed, you know, I, I've spoken to, to the judge over there in, in, in Red Hook, that uh, people have to be told that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't come naturally to some folks. So, so I guess a, a lot of questions there, especially probably from uh, viewers. And so uh, currently somebody gets in trouble because they walk through the park at night. Uh, and so they, they might get a, a summons and now instead of going to oath, or they can oh. do it online or whatever. So currently they, they get sent to a criminal court and now you mm -hmm. uh, maybe probably have to hire a lawyer. They, they don't necessarily, uh, I, I guess so. Now there's gonna be an opportunity where folks can actually just go to Oath. They can do it over the phone. They can go online and they can even uh, do community service if they don't have the money to pay the fine. That's right. That, that's, that's a big difference. Uh, if you got a criminal court summons, you have to go to criminal court. Period. Yeah. And if you don't go, you, there's a, an arrest warrant issued for you. Um, if you don't... So, so somebody gets in trouble for, for spitting on the sidewalk or walking through the park at night. They, they can't take the day out of work or their kid's sick and they need to go to the hospital or something. They miss the court date and now they, there's a, a warrant out for their arrest. That's right. Uh, in fact, very recently uh, we were at an event with the Brooklyn uh, District Attorney mm -hmm. uh, where he had uh, criminal court judges, and we were there handing out flyers uh, in anticipation of the changes that were coming mm -hmm. and telling folks about it, uh, where people who had gotten summonses sometimes years ago, mm -hmm. criminal court summonses, and had an arrest warrant okay. for what we would consider goofy stuff in, in, in some instances, and, and, and so they were vacated and taken care of. Right and there. so starting later this year, all these cases are going to be handled by Oath. Uh, so for folks who want to learn more uh, or contact Oath, uh, what's the best way for them to get in touch? Well, the best way, the easiest way is uh, the, the city's website, okay. uh, which we are, by the way, in the process of revamping, okay. um, which is, uh, I believe, www.nyc.gov slash Oath. Okay. And that'll give you a bunch of links to uh, a lot of stuff. That's all the time we have today. Thank you, Commissioner Del Valle, for joining me and our viewers, and thank you for watching this edition of Represent NYC. I'm Councilmember Ben Kalos. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.